ピカピーピカチュピカピカピカチュあの、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この間、この The original design was conceived by Atsuko Nishida and finalized by Ken Sugimori. Completely overshadowing Game Freak's previously planned co mascot Clefairy, the electronic mouse has attracted a following rivaling Hello Kitty in Japan and over time has spawned manga, anime, as much merchandise as you can imagine, and even a movie starring Ryan Reynolds, which may or may not be to do with the coincidental timing of this video. But that's not to say that Pikachu hasn't changed though, the mouse has had a serious evolution, and today I'm going to explore which design I think truly is best. Now, Pikachu's appearance has spanned across a multitude of sources over a solid two decades. Whilst covering the best designs over the years, it's not going to be possible for me to look at all of them. You know the drill, if I miss out any key examples, let me know in the comments and tell me which design you prefer. Pikachu Mania was released on the world with the original Pokemon titles on the Game Boy. Here, the character was established as a yellow mouse with pointed ears, red cheeks, a lightning bolt like tail, and a cute and chubby posterior. The game's artwork followed similar 90s trends in regards to shading and style, but Pikachu really did encapsulate the monster in Pocket Monster here. Not quite a mouse and not quite a monster, but certainly unique, memorable, and cute beyond belief. I mentioned Clefairy's original plans earlier. With that in mind, I think it's important to note Pikachu's original pointed ears almost exactly resemble Clefairy's evolution, Clefable. This original Pikachu design was featured in artworks across the instruction booklets, the front cover of Pokemon Yellow, and in other forms of media such as the Pokemon trading card game. It established a strong start for the character and a basis for this design. Obviously, these games were just the starting point of what would be a huge regularly occurring franchise. In the games themselves, each generation brought a slight change to Pikachu's look. Some of this was down to the advancements in technology during the Game Boy's evolution into the Game Boy Advance and DS, but it's hard to ignore the intentional design changes made to the series' mascot. The biggest takeaway at a glance is the fluctuation in the character's weight. It almost makes you think that Nintendo forced the cute little chonk onto a treadmill in order to reach society's unrealistic expectations. Shame on you, Nintendo. The sprite work became much more detailed, but with this came differences. Pikachu's cheeks grew, ears became less pointed and more relaxed, and the general rounded and curvy physique slimmed out to give quite a different looking Pokemon. Generation 4 introduced heart shaped tails for female Pikachu. Which made it easier to tell which gender Pokemon you were catching. By the time the 3DS finally had a game of its own, Generation 6 moved away from 2D sprites and established a 3D model for the character, which, largely speaking, has been left reasonably unchanged since Pokemon X and Y. The upcoming and recently announced Pokemon Sword and Shield highlights this in its reveal trailer, with a very similar looking Pikachu present. Speaking of 3D designs, alongside the handheld titles, Pikachu has also appeared in a number of other games across Nintendo consoles. These largely followed the same evolution. The Super Smash Bros. series highlights this quite clearly, with a chronological progression of the character. The original Smash Bros., as always, did highlight a unique cartoon style for Pikachu, however. There goes my obligatory Smash Bros. 64 art reference. I'm sure these will stop coming at some point. Pikachu's in game changes over the years have also extended to the anime and any official artwork. Outside of mascots and plushies, here are an abundance of them that I found at my recent trip to Play Expo Manchester, for example. Pikachu slowly became a thing of the past, and the design was relatively grounded now, with many games offering small cosmetic differences to change up the character a bit. The Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series gave Pikachu a scarf, 
likely to differentiate this Pikachu from the main one we associate with the anime. This didn't get quite as much hate as someone else's scarf redesign, I just want to point out. Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby on the 3DS also introduced a number of special cosplay Pikachu exclusive to the game. Amongst these included Rockstar, Belle, Popstar, PhD, Jessica Negri and Pikachu Libre. Wait. Pikachu Libre was a fan favourite especially, appearing in the Pokken fighting game series as well as the recent Super Smash Bros Ultimate. Detective Pikachu on the 3DS also used the same established Pikachu design but gave him a cute little Sherlock Holmes style hat and coat. Not a groundbreaking change, but a cute little way of distinguishing the character. Despite these looks being relatively similar, there are a few that have steered away from these conventions over the years. Across the Pokemon manga, I can't really say that Pikachu has a consistent design, but it is consistently different from the main established look. In some cases, this is a very pointy and angular design, which in ways can look quite derpy yet still endearing. In other instances, the character looks a bit more lumpy like his original depiction, but with a heightened level of cuteness. One of the common designs present in mangas such as The Electric Tale of Pikachu features smaller oval like cheeks that put more emphasis on those big cute eyes. I'm very fond of this one as it reminds me of a fat cat that appears in my life from time to time. While the anime has also been pretty set in its look, the recent Sun and Moon series have been a big departure. This anime on the whole opts for a much more minimalistic art style for the full cast of characters. This leaves us with a Pikachu that while similar, features less shading and detail with an emphasis on line art for the purpose of emoting a bit more. I don't dislike this look, but it has been subject to quite a bit of criticism online. It seems like one of those instances where off-model screen grabs are far easier to find. The shape of Pikachu does seem to alter across this show as well. I think they were trying to have free-flowing expressive designs and you either love them or hate them. The Pokemon Center is an official Pokemon retailer and shop and also features its own unique Pikachu design that spans across various pieces of merchandise. This look is typically presented with simplistic colors and a thick line art style but the key difference is the shape of Pikachu's head. It's a round oval, and while it may not be 100% noticeable on a first glance, it's a bit different to many of the modern designs. It's a good time to mention the Let's Go Pikachu design here, as from the artwork at least, I can see a few similarities to the Pokemon Center look. In ways, this looks like a mixture between this design and the original art style of the classic games, which would make sense given that this was a remake of the Game Boy games on the Nintendo Switch. In-game, to me at least, this design doesn't really look any different to the Pikachu we tend to recognise. It feels like a step up from the 3DS games graphically, with perhaps the one slight difference being that the Pokemon has been made ever so slightly stockier to fit in with the game's cutesy aesthetic. This is definitely the cutest in-game depiction of Pikachu I can think of, with emphasis again on dress up with additional Tamagotchi like features here to hammer in that vibe. Now out of the designs I've featured, I must say I'm a big fan of the originals. I'm sure that nostalgia is definitely a huge factor that plays into my decision making here as these designs were the first I saw and definitely left an impact in my mind. Episode 1, I Choose You Pikachu from the anime is hands down my favourite version of the character. He's chubs and cute and his facial expressions are absolutely the highlight of the initial episode. It's not a design point, but he's definitely the sassiest version of the character too, and I absolutely love rewatching this episode. But shockingly, I don't think this design is the best. I think this is. Now, I'm sure I'll have my skeptics for saying this, and also people think in the movie have just paid me off. Trust me, as I type this, I'm eating a cold can of beans with a fork. But aesthetically, I absolutely love the movie version of Pikachu that has just debuted. Many have claimed Uncanny Valley with the Pokemon designs in this movie, and yeah, I can see that in places, but not with Pikachu. Ignore the voice, that's not what I'm talking about here, I'm talking about this floofy bundle of joy. I love getting surprises thrown my way, and I never ever in a million years would have expected to see a live action Pikachu that looked like this. When the film was rumoured, I don't know why, but I imagine that it would be like the classic look that we knew already. 
I was stunned when I saw the reveal, and I'm gutted that I didn't film my reaction to it. This Pikachu to me perfectly resembles the established look, and it's as if they just applied a real world filter over the top. The obvious key difference is the fur, which has its different shades of colour within it, but other than that, the design is actually very faithful. Proportion wise, it's spot on and it makes me want a real Pikachu in my life. Proportions are important. I'm really looking forward to seeing this film and I'm hoping to do a little review of sorts after I get a chance to check it out, so do keep tabs on the channel if you'd like to see my opinion on it. Now, this will never happen, but I really want a Pokemon game now that looks like the movie. It's a completely unrealistic expectation I know, they've got however many hundred Pokemon to implement now, but I can't lie, when I saw the reveal of Sword and Shield, I was a bit let down graphically. I guess sometimes there are limits and risks that shouldn't be taken, but it would be really something to see a Pokemon game on a truly epic scale with a realistic look and feel. That or add some realistic Pokemon into Pokemon Go. I'll accept that. Now, what do you think? Do you agree with me on this design and would you like to see realistic Pokemon in an actual game? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my reactions to the Sonic movie design as well as all these other character design retrospectives. At this time, I'd like to thank my art producer patrons with special shout outs to Top Hat Gaming Man and Aiden Briggs who are supporting me at the highest tier of donations. If you'd like to be credited too, head on over to my Patreon, a link can be found in the description.